This is Podcast, Conversations on Philippine History, Politics, and Society. Maya na, pero dito sa podcast, we cannot let April go just yet. Bulikan natin ang ilan sa mga pinakamalalaking issue at pangyayari sa nakaraang buwan. Kaya naman welcome sa ating April Monthly Wrap-Up. Ako si Dee. Hello, hello sa inyong lahat. And just like that, one-third ng 2021 ay natapos na. Ako si Aaron. Ang bilis, no? At ako si Vec. And for this monthly wrap-up, uh, we are very excited kasi kung last month, ang guest natin ay si Ash Presto. For this month, we would like to welcome to the show, Andoy Evangelista. Welcome! Hello! Ako si Andoy. Ako ay nasa larangan ng sosyolohiya at kas- kasalukuyang nag-aaral ng aking uh, doktorado uh, sa Hong Kong. Ang aking larangan, particular na larangan, ay queer politics. Alright. Okay, so for this monthly wrap-up, we have identified a few issues. At ang unang-una dito hmm. ay yung isang issue na bumungad. So, ito halos kasabay ng pagkaka-implement muli ng Enhanced Community Quarantine na tinawag din ng NCR+. So, a- ang tawag namin sa issue na to ay hashtag patay na ba? So, this was the period, I think for a period of nine days, Uh, MIA, si Pangulong Duterte, they postponed yung schedule niya na no weekly address. Nakaschedule supposed din ng April 7. So sabi ni Senator Bongo, ipapospone daw muna yung yung weekly address na ibinibigay ng Pangulo tuwing lunes ng gabi. Uh, kasi may mga nag-positive na miyembro ng PSG at ito ay sinagundo, sinagundahan ni Harry Roque. Yung sinabi niya na, well, kailangan kasi mag-ingat kasi may mga uh, malakan niyang staff niya, sinabi ng PSG, na nag-test uh, positive sa COVID-19. So, ang nangyari, of course, people were skeptical about about this prolonged absence. I, I mean, this was the first time that the president missed uh, his weekly address this year. And alam naman natin na long-standing issue talaga, yung health, yung kalusugan ng Pangulo uh, for years since he assumed the presidency. Diba? At siya naman mismo sa kanyang mga talumpati, sinasabi niya yung iba't ibang health issues na kinakaharap niya, right? Um, so, there were a lot of speculations online. So, kung patay na daw ba yung Pangulo na mabilis na uh, pinabulaanan ng kanyang long-time personal aide, Bongo, sa pamamagitan ng pag-send uh, ng photograph ng Pangulo na nasa Malacanang sa mga reporters. So, anong masasabi nyo dito sa hashtag patay na ba? Siyempre, alam mo naman yung ano, very reminiscent eh, yung picture kasi na sine, na pinablisize ay parang nag-golf siya, di ba? Uh-huh. At night. Mm-hmm. At night. Nagmumoto. Nagja-jog. <laughs> di ba? O nagja-jog niya. So very reminiscent siya, di ba? Ganun si Marcos, di ba? Yung nung uh-huh. pinoportray ni Marcos na malusog pa siya, mm-hmm. di ba? Yun pala, sinisira na ng kid, ng, ng, ng kung ano-ano yung kid niya, lupus and whatever. Dinadialysis so, na pala siya, no? Oo. I think kasi, um, if you look at it, yung ano yung entire scaffolding kasi ng campaign ni Duterte ay doon sa strongman at bahagi ng strongman ay physicality di ba yung mm-hmm. masculinity is measured for the most part of physical strength so pag bumagsak kasi yon ah mm-hmm. uh, malaki nung sca- malaking scaffolding ng power ng, ng performance niya of power ay babagsak din so kinailangan mm-hmm. nilang Uh, sagutin agad yon At dahil threat yon aga- against dun sa kung paano niya itinatanghal yung kanyang kapangyarihan bilang isang, you know, lalaki, presidente, you know, all these, you know, macho. Sa so, tingin ko, bumapalpak, di ba? As, you know, queer scholars should always say, lahat naman ng gender performance ay mag-fail eventually. What I find interesting about this is nine days siyang nawala or several days siyang nawala. Tapos babalik siya with photos showing na malakas naman pala ako. Mm-hmm. So parang, eh, malakas ka naman pala. Bakit hindi ka nagpapakita? So ibig sabihin, may conscious decision ka just to avoid the media. I mean, you're the president. Hindi dapat ganyan yung, yung actions ng isang president. If you're working, then show us you're working. You don't have to show us you're golfing at night. Are we supposed to be happy seeing that you're healthy? When you should, if you're healthy, you should actually be working, right? Sa akin yung isang gusto kong banggitin doon, yung, yung conversation outside of, 
conversation sa public about it, ba? Diba? Na, again, may kita mo pa rin dun yung strong na support kay Duterte. Kasi meron pa rin nagsasabi na, uh, na talagang kailangan niya magpahinga, ganyan, he's a working president, no? Pero on the other side of it, marami rin talaga yung napaka-skeptical na doon sa ganong narrative to the point na nung naglabas uh, si Senator Bongo nung picture na magkasama sila, Diba? ay lumabas na naman yung yung circulation ng skepticism na ito ay photoshop, na ito ay edited picture, na, na, na may ganun na siyang, na, na, kahit yung pagkawala niya, kahit yung quote-unquote absence niya for that extended period of time creates so much division sa sa public. is is very telling din sa sa kinakaharap natin na political at social climate sa Pilipinas. Diba? Lalo na kasi, again, napaka-charge nung context ng COVID-19 na kaka-impose mo lang nung bagong pulisiya na, na lockdown ulit na it appeared na wala tayong na-achieve in the last year of of combating the disease, ta- the virus rather. Tapos, biglang mawawala ka. No? So, yung, yung ganong... ganong impact niya dun sa social conversation yung yung talagang nag-strike sa akin na kahit na may picture supposedly ang initial reaction nung nung madaming tao ay peke yan di ba na parang hindi siya tinignan na ah okay nag-work naman pala siya ang, ang tanong ng mga tao ay totoo ba yan no yung yung ganong level siguro ng distrust do dun sa sa narrative na fino forward nung ng government, I think, is very telling dun sa konteksto sa Pilipinas. Ako, gusto kong i-point out yung how chaotic the way that, you know, the administration or the uh, the, the people behind Duterte tries to build this image. Kasi binanggit ni Andre kanina na yung pagpapakita, pag-demonstrate ng physical health, it is something that's common uh, across strong men, di ba? I mean, even even Quezon, di ba? Meron siyang iconic photograph na yung nakaglare siya dun sa isang photographer. Galit siya kasi pinipicturean siya habang nagko-collapse siya. Kasi ayaw niya yun kasi ayaw niya mm-hmm. magpakita ng, na, na mahina siya. Pero on the other hand, parang mukhang they are also trying to uh, invoke sympathy na matanda na si tatay, mm. kailangan niya magpahinga, mm-hmm. o si tatay yeah. kahit may sakit siya. Uh, ano sabi ni Bongo nung, <laughs> nung, nung nag-send siya nung picture sa mga photographer o oh, eto nagkatrabaho sa Malacañang tambak ang trabaho I mean and I think implicit mm-hmm. rasik is that you know this man is old he's the oldest president mm-hmm. has ever assumed power ever di ba mm-hmm. so give him a break parang ganon so anong ibig sabihin so I think they're trying to address um, different kinds of audiences on the other hand uh, they they want to you know impress people of this president's continued strength Tapos sa kabilang banda naman, they're also trying to invoke, yun nga, uh, sympathy uh, doon sa isang matandag lalaki na obviously not in his prime of health anymore, uh, very sickly and so mm-hmm. Importante naman talaga yun, di ba? Everybody needs a break from work. Mm-hmm. Kahit sino naman, di ba? I think yung issue lang kasi dito, yung tone deafness na parang yung mga... kamabayan mm. mo ay namamatay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Tapos biglang ay, una mo ipapakita ang picture after nine days of your MIA, ay nag-golf ka. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So parang, I think, so hindi lang edad, di ba? Meron ding class na tone Mm-mm. deafness dun sa performance na parang, wait lang. Parang, sana yung unang picture na pinakalat mo, eh, ibang picture yung hindi naman bulag or hindi man lang, hindi pipi doon sa sa pagdurusa ng taong bayan sa gitna ng isang pandemya, di ba? Hmm. Or yung tone deafness, I mean, parang nung Holy Week, nung he chose to fly to Davao. Yeah. Um, while, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. people are dying. And yung birthday niya na, na madaming handa at ano, may pinya <laughs> na nakanin. Na oh, yeah. So it's all about framing, I think, and positioning. I mean, for Duterte, yeah. he knows that he enjoys an unprecedented level of popularity. popularity to the point na parang iniisip siguro dito Duterte no, na parang kahit anong gawin ko, okay lang, popular pa rin mm-hmm. naman ako. But we all know that as president, he is mandated to tell the people his health situation. He should be transparent about it. Dumako naman tayo sa isang issue na napag-usapan na natin sa nakaraang wrap-up pero nagpapatuloy pa rin. the saga that is the West Philippine Sea and the continued presence of the Chinese in our exclusive economic zone, or EEZ. Itong April 6 lang, nagkaroon ng U.S. presence sa disputed waters and it was very effective. 
itong maritime drills na ito ay nagpanginig sa mga Chinese enough for them to formally urge the Philippines to stop the drills because according to them, it could escalate the dispute. The Philippines, of course, has been continuously complaining about the Chinese presence and many have been asking President Duterte to speak about it. At nito lang a few days ago, Duterte talked about it. He posed a question to retired Supreme Court Justice Antonio Carpio and former Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario. Sabi niya, if you're bright, why did we lose the West Philippine Sea? Na it was during their time daw, when Carpio and Del Rosario were holding positions, that we lost the West Philippine Sea. And why is it that Duterte is now burdened now to find a solution to this problem? So, what can you say about this issue? I think we have to straighten that out. The, I mean, I am not, I am no yellow apologist, but the stance of the Aquino administration in relation to the West Philippine Sea is very clear. They were fighting for it. So we have to straighten up first. And in fact, we won that dispute. Mm-hmm. Diba? It was Duterte who decided to set aside the yeah. Hague ruling. Diba? Ang sabi yeah, niya, I mean, let's focus yeah. first on what we can get from China instead yeah. of arguing for this Hague ruling. Na malinaw na malinaw na na-award sa atin. Tayo nanalo. Having said that though, we cannot be blind about the U.S. interest in the West Philippine Sea. Siyempre, may political interest at colonial interest din yung American presence doon. I mean, we have to navigate that you know tricky line of how do we depend on our allies like the United States but at the same time resist their colonial interest in assuring that the Philippines gets sovereignty over the West Philippine Sea. Oh, actually, in relation to that, meron na akong siguro two points. I think, syempre, yun nga yung sinabi ni Ando, yung bigger global context nung, nung situation. Syempre, it's it's about uh, positioning ng global powers, positioning in in very contested and and important sea routes, particularly like the the West Philippine Sea. No? So, may kita rin natin dito yung dynamic kasi as much as yung mga sempre on the ground yung mga diplomats natin they would say naman na kahit na, na mayroong uh, pivot to China na nangyari during the Duterte's term hindi naman talaga natin completely inabandon yung relationship natin with the United States diba na natuloy-tuloy naman yung trade agreements natin and so on and so forth uh, i think yung yung critical point ngayon na nagbi-bring out ng conversation is because meron ding bagong administration sa United States. No? So, hindi rin natin alam kung paano yung magiging bagong dynamic ni Rodrigo Duterte and with Joe Biden. Yung, kung paano niya lalaruin yung geopolitics ngayon with Xi Jinping on the one hand and Joe Biden on the other. So, hindi pa natin may kita yun fully ngayon. Pero, I think ito yung isang isang flashpoint again na, na bumalik na naman yung conversation about uh, the visiting forces agreement and yung mga balikat na exercises in relation to continuous Chinese presence doon sa, sa contested waters. No, na, well, hindi naman na dapat contested kasi nga may Hague ruling. Yung second point ko doon, yung doon sa binanggit ni Lee kanina na challenge ni President Duterte kay former Justice Carpio, I think this is also a response doon sa coalition na one sambayan, di ba, na binuon yeah. itong mga ito, di ba, na parang it's a way to challenge the to, to post that you know na okay you want to you want this this uh competition for for space uh, sa public conversation dahil nagtatag ka ng ng coalition na yan uh, sagutin mo to ngayon tanong na to bakit nawala sa atin yung yung West Philippines nung panahon yun no? so yung yung mga ganong alam mo yon parang uh, ping pong na na politics na okay na y- y- yun din yung i think mga mga salient uh, conversation points with regard to the recent incident dito sa, sa West Philippine Sea. Yeah. Ako tingin ko, itong issue talaga na to, uh, sobra siyang, <laughs> sobra siyang indefensible. I mean, it, isa ito sa mga, tingin ko, hindi nila, ma, hindi nila matwist eh. Di ba? Hindi nila mabaloktot hmm. yung issue. Hindi nila mabigyan ng ibang angulo eh. Kaya yeah, kung anong ginagawa nila, like ngayon, ang framing nila, kasalanan ng previous administration, di ba? Parang, girl, uh, patagos na yung term mo eh. Kasalanan pa rin ng previous administration. So, sobrang hmm. indefensible siya. To the point na gumagamit na sila ng mga absurd tools, like di ba, recently, si Robin Padilla. 
<laughs> meron siyang mm. oh, yeah. meron siyang statement na na binitawan uh, na sobrang ridiculous sobrang hindi nagme-make sense sobrang funny ginawa na ng iba't ibang uh, ibang iba't ibang I mean pinroll na siya ng mga tao because of that parang ganun lang yung I mean that's the best that they can do na lang eh divert the attention of the people by using this pawns di ba uh, na maging sobrang uh, ridiculous and ludicrous just to escape the just to escape serious scrutiny, I think. Or yung idea, limbawa, yung fino-forward ni Robin Padilla, at I think ni Duterte rin, sinasabi nila na, we cannot win the war if we fight the war. So, ang point is, bakit kailangan may war agad? Bakit kailangan hmm. ng pag, pag-iisip ay framing na zero-sum thinking? If, because we will not win, we should not fight it. Hmm. Hindi naman yun lang uh, yeah. yung only recourse para ma-settle yeah. yung issue na ito, di ba? Kaya nga tayo nagpunta sa permanent court of arbitration, di ba? Mm. Parang they parang they want people to forget that eh. Yung mm-hmm. yung 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 panalo yung na yun. Venue. Eh. Oh, oh. Yeah. Saka ang ano ko doon, ni-reinforce nung noong diskurso na yun na war freak yung China. I mean, if you look at the the mm-hmm. records Totoo. or the the trends of how China deals mm-hmm. with with the international community, hindi naman siya irrational yeah. na you know, mm-hmm. magwawala na lang siya yeah. like recalcitrant straight like North Korea na very unpredictable mm-hmm. in the past. It's not like that. It still belongs to the community of nations and who acts rationally in that space. Kaya nga, di ba, nung nakita nila yung American presence, umatras sila. So, mm-hmm. anong sinasabi nun sa'yo? So, we have to also nuance our understanding of how China deals with the international community to engage yung discourse ni Duterte na ano gusto niyo gera agad mm. di ba I, I think that's also a very populist rhetoric yung yung the way you simplify issues the way you simplify mm, yeah. and you create crises diba? and uh-huh. breakdown yeah. and very, threats very mm. very populist that's true yeah at mukhang sa susunod na mga buwan eh lalabas pa rin talaga itong issue ng West Philippine Sea sa ating monthly wrap up kaya naman magmove on na tayo <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, we, we all know the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines. Thousands. Uh, ano na ba yung latest count? Papunta na ba ng millions? Lumampas cases? na ng million. Lumampas, Lumampas na, na isang oh, million. Ng millions of cases. So, earlier, nagkaroon na naman ng mga strict lockdowns and therefore, you know, hindi na naman makapagtrabaho yung maraming mga kababayan natin. Amid that chaos, may mga ilang uh, citizens who were fed up with the inaction of the amelioration programs and all these things, yung mga flaws niya. So they started putting up small, what they call community pantries. Although the term community pantry came uh, recently, pero the practice has been percolating uh, since the start of the pandemic in Las Piñas, Caritas, Manila. May mga ganyan na na, na idea. Pero yung... What was, I think, striking with the community pantries is it spread like wildfire in most of the localities in the Philippines. And na-carry yung principle, yung laging nakalagay na tar- sa tarpaulin or sa karton na um, magbigay, ng, magbigay batay sa kakayahan, uh, kumuha uh, batay sa pangangailangan. So I think more than the fact that it served, you know, uh, thousands materially, di ba? Ma- yung prinsipyo ng, di ba, in the, it's a cliche in many progressive movements, to each according to our abilities, which is stresses our duty to the collective. Ibigay mo yung kaya mo. Tapos, to each according to our needs. Kuhanin mo sa collective kung ano yung kailangan mo. That is the entire the mantra na. of of a socialist uh, welfare society that we take care of each other. Not only do we get what we need from the collective, but we also give what we can to the collective according to our abilities. So, yeah. So, yun. And then I wrote, you know, marami nang naisulat na pieces, pero I wrote something in the New Mandala, and I, my analysis is that it's everyday socialism. You know, of course, it's not the socialism of historical magnitude like, you know, Cuba or uh, or in many Latin American societies in the Nordic uh, European region. But it's everyday. It's uh, yung 
favorite line ko dun sa sinulat ko na parang what it shows us is that the seeds of fighting for a fairer, fairer society sa isang mas makatarungan lipunan ay hindi far-fetched. Nandyan yung mga prinsipyo sa common sense natin. You know, and as Gramsci would say, Antonio Gramsci would say, there is a grain of truth in common sense. So, I think what it also tells us is that hindi malayo yung pangarap ng isang makatarungang lipunan kasi nandyan yung mga paniniwala na pwede natin gamitin para itayo yung lipunan na yun. Ako gusto ko i-point out na simula nung gumawa kami ng monthly wrap-up, simula nung January, ngayon lang kami nagkaroon ng parang, you know, something positive to talk about traditionally okay. na itong diba? community country na to. Ako, ang, ang sobrang gustong gusto ko dito, um, hindi sa charity lang eh. ba? Diba? Yeah. Gusto ko yung ano eh, yung, yung, I don't know kung tama yung term ko, uh, pero I like the, the dignity inherent in it. Kasi, yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the poor people, uh, the masses, who actually benefit from the community pantry because they were told that they could help according to their ability, di ba, was, you know, put in a position na hindi lang sila yung nasa receiving end. And I think that's that's very good. Kailangan laging, yeah. laging may ganon eh. Di ba, na yeah. uh, ilagay mo din sila dun sa position. Yun nga eh, parang it's, it's dignity in helping or dignity in receiving. Yeah. And I think also, yeah. um, that's what makes it, you know, original, innovative. Hindi mo kailangan maging mayaman para para makapagbigay. Hindi mo kailangan well, patunayan sa DSW din na naghihirap oh, at nagwawala ka na. Oo, oh, tama. Yung mga ganong proseso, di ba? Sobrang, sobrang siya nakakawala ng dignidad na kailangan mong patunayan na gutom na gutom ka. Di ba? It's, it's degrading and we don't yeah. like that. Second, yung very simple na napag-put up nito, napakadali niyang gawin, na yun lang pala. Alright? Tapos, I mm-hmm. like the way that this changes how people think in society kung saan lahat ng bagay ay kailangan mong bilhin. Di ba? Pwede pala, okay lang pala yun. Is it, it's okay lang pala for people to get free stuff. Di ba? To get free food. And, of course, and people are saying na, di ba, yung mga, yung mga edgy, mga edge lord na nag-criticize ito, ay, hindi yan pang matagalan, hindi yan sustainable, band aid solution yan. Tama. But that's the point, di ba? right? I mean, that's that's right. Gano'n naman talaga, hindi, ko, hindi mo naman na-expect na dyan sila na depende uh, buong buhay nila. Ang gusto lang natin ay, makakain sila for this day. At sa mga susunod na yeah. araw, di ba? I mean, sino ba naman ang gustong pumila ng limang oras, di ba? Sabi ng mga kaibigan natin sa isang community pantry sa Quezon City. Sino ba naman? Di ba? Pupila yung mga beneficiaries ng, uh, mm. oh, pupila sila ng uh, five hours or more dahil sa, dahil sa dami ng, ng, ng nakapila doon sa pantry nila. Sino ba naman may gustong gawin yan? Ginagawa nila yun because they have yeah. no choice, di ba? Otherwise, they won't eat, di ba? At, you know, yung, their hmm. willingness to give back yung yung mga maraming mga kwento uh, of how people na pagkakuha nila ibibigay nila kung ano yung meron silang extra yung isang matandang babae yeah. na nagbebenta ng kaka, na nagbebenta ng kakanin tapos since nakuha niya na yung kailangan niya for the day ibibigay niya na yung mga uh, pa- paninda yeah. niya yung sa pantry I mean, that's that's really yeah. beautiful it's really simple yeah. may tricycle driver na nagdonate ng isang daan di ba hmm. may tricycle wow. driver na nagdonate ng isang daan or yung magkataho na naglagay nung uh, products niya, yeah, di ba? To give to true. other people. Oh, or yung drivers na nag-repack eh. nung, nung bigas. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Or yung military na gumawa rin ng sariling community pantry. <laughs> yeah. Oo nga. Ito, pag, actually, diba, actually, diba, actually, pag-usapan natin yun, yung pag-co-op nila. Yeah. So, well, yes, ano naman yan? Bago yun, I think yung ano muna, yung... Let's talk about how the community pantry was tagged as something is communist. <laughs> yeah. But it's um, related well, to the CPP uh, well, and PA. Yeah. Not, my article is not about them being communist in the web, you know, violent yeah. sense, but it is socialist, right? In principle, yeah. it is. Um, it's just that yung red, yung red tagging kasi is inaano sila agad na um, violent agad yung ano and i guess the yung ano kasi diyan yun yung problema ko minsan doon sa stereotype that we associate socialism or communism right away to violence because it obscures the core principle ano ba yung core principle ng ng progressive ideas nobody should be too poor to live yun yung nakakalimutan ng maraming tao hmm. yun yung nakakalimutan ng maraming tao na may core principle siya Naka, nakatoon ka doon lagi sa violence i mean yeah, if you look at history, maraming violent revolutions. Pero if you look at history, marami din 
na nakaangkla doon sa principle na dapat walang naghihirap. Hmm. Yeah. Di ba? Gusto kong mag-dovetail din doon sa sinabi ni Nivek kanina na, na the community pantries was really, in many ways, empowering to many people. Kasi, uh, di ba, nabigyan ka ng avenue na, okay, hindi ko pala kailangan maging billionaire to be able to help. Not that I can help yeah. in, in my own way. And hindi ko pala kailangan na, na, na maging superstar para magputap ng ganitong initiative. Di ba? Yeah. So, I think yung isang ma- ma- mahalaga din na... na conversation na na bring about nung nung community pantry is talagang na dispel yung yung middle class upper middle class <laughs> notion about the people na out to get na mag na kumuha ng ng na, alam yun magkamal labis. ng magkamal yeah. ng labi sa sa kanilang pangangailangan it dispel that that notion na okay pag nagput up ka ng ng ano magkakaroon ng looting na hindi kapag sinabi mo sa mga tao na ito ay community effort para wala nang nagugutom at tayo ay magtulungan lahat ay magbabayanihan in essence na okay hindi ko to kukunin kasi may iba pang nangangailangan yun yung isang na reveal na na conversation niya na na I think katulad nga ng sinabi ni Andoy na it is socialist kasi it stands in direct opposition to that capitalist rhetoric of accumulation yeah. and continuous accumulation yeah, na na kailangan mo lang magkamal lang magkamal diba so kaya yeah. din I think there is nothing wrong with with phrasing or, or with describing the community pantry as something quote unquote revolutionary because it challenged way conventional ways of thinking about how we do things no so yeah. kaya din kaya din siguro naging napakadali para sa government hindi naman necessarily siguro sa government pero doon sa mga naging skeptical about it na i-brand siya i-red tag yung yung initiatives no sa akin yung yung medyo nakakalungkot lang din doon, palaging yung tanong about the community pantry ng maraming tao ay, ano ba yung end goal? Bakit nagpo-put up ng community pantry? Ano yung <laughs> mm. hidden agenda? Parang, bakit ba laging may hidden agenda na iniisip yung mga tao? Hindi ba pwedeng i-take siya na ito ay initiative para walang magutom. Yun, yun, mm. ba, ba? Diba? Bakit ang concern natin ay sino si Patricia noon? Ano yung mm. background niya? Whereas, the con- conversation should be, bakit ang haba ng pila? Uh, visibly, ang authority threatened eh. Diba? I mean, the way they reacted, the <laughs> yeah. way they tried to co-op, the way they tried to antagonize the organizers, the way they put yeah. their own community pantries, diba? Yes. I mean, you red tagging ng NTF, no, NTF LCAC. <laughs> what an ugly exactly. name or uh, yeah. agency. <laughs> NTF LCAC. Yeah. Parang they're just finding things to red tag <laughs> to, yeah. to say na, ah, this is, this is um, related to the CPP NPA. Is this an agency that is um, mandated to create ghosts uh, uh, for, or yeah. enemies for Duterte's administration to fight? Otherwise, sinong kalaban? Mm-hmm. Kasi parang ganun yung nangyayari. And we heard... Someone from the Duterte administration actually telling um, Badoy and who's the other guy? Uh, Parlade. Not Esperon. Ah, Parlade. 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 That they should shut up already about community pantries. That they cannot talk about community pantries yeah. anymore. Kasi mali, mismo ang administrasyon nakikita na mali na, mali na talaga itong ginagawa ng NTFL ka regard, uh, and, and what they think about this community pantries. Yeah. Saka yung call to parang sabi ni Badoy parang kailangan i-account ni ni Kapatren. Yun yung tawag ng mga tao sa kay 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 Patricia. Ah eh. uh, yung mga ano mga donation. Tapos ako parang unahin mo muna yung <laughs> ano ah uh, mo muna yung liquidation ng NTFL ka. Oh, girl, Napakadami yung diba? intelligence mm. fund. Donations Ang laki ng budget nila billion. Ay, yeah. So, mm-hmm. at saka hinihingi nila 'yon sa community pantry na napaka-transparent nga yeah. na kasi nakikita mo naman na nauubos yung goods. Tsaka kung kanino napupunta? <laughs> so bakit mo hinahanap kung saan napupunta? Ayan, Ayan, Ayan na nga, na kinukuha nga ng mga tao yeah. tapos may nagdo-donate. So parang ano ano pa ba bang kailangan? Ah, donation hindi. I mean, kung contact siya ng taong bayan, sige, paghanapan mo, 'di ba? Pero donation 'yan eh. At saka sana yung government din, i-divert nila yung attention nila. Kasi, di ba, katulad ng sinabi natin kanina, na 
the goal of the community pantry, I think, is to be obsolete. Diba? Wala namang community pantry na gusto na maging okay, forever yeah, siyang nag exist Sana yung maging goal ng government ay, okay, we need to end community pantry by doing better. Yeah. Hindi mm. by red tagging it. Yeah. Diba? Sana yun yung maging enlightenment on the part of of the people in in government na, may, na mas may malaki namang makinarya at, at kakayahan talaga na isa katuparan yung spirit behind yeah. the community pantry. That's true. And it would be so weird if the government itself would make a community pantry. Kasi nga, di ba, uh, ang idea is government, kaya nga community pantry yung mga tao kasi walang, wal, walang sapat sa na, na ibinibigay yung gobyerno. So for the military, for example, to have community pantries, it's quite ironic. Imbis na ang bigyan nilang atensyon ay halimbawa yung West Philippine Sea, which in itself is a community pantry, sabi sa isang nabasa kong tweet, na China lang ang nakikinabang, <laughs> di ba? Dapat siguro doon sila pumunta at yun yung community pantry na sirain nila. Hindi itong community pantry <laughs> sa maginhawa at sa iba pang mga lugar. Alright, so sa, sa, sa listeners natin, pwede kayong mag-donate sa ating existing community pantries. Just visit their Facebook pages, I think, or the Facebook pages of organizers yeah. like mm-hmm. APNON. And let's keep it alive. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it alive on the yeah. uh, Again, katulad nung binanggit natin kanina dahil uh, na-cover naman natin yung idea ng leadership ni Duterte, yung idea ng uh, West Philippines International Relations at yung community pantry na natungkol sa resources at pag-allocate ng resources. We end with uh, a particular issue na nangyari lang uh, nitong last week of April uh, in relation to the continuing commemoration of the Kinsentennial of the circumnavigation of the world. No? So, uh, syempre, alam na natin lahat na noong 1521 ay dumating si Magellan at namatay siya sa Mactan dahil sa encounter with the local chief na si Lapu-Lapu. No? So, noong Tuesday, uh, April 26, ay naganap yung isang commemoration event tungkol dito sa sa Battle of Mactan. And the Battle of Mactan actually happened during this time uh, wherein merong isang guest speaker Uh, in the person of Senator Bongo, who delivered quite a controversial piece of of statement of of speech, no? Na uh, kung saan nagkaroon ng maraming question kasi ang binanggit niya doon ay si Lapu Lapu ay galing sa ay isang tausug at ipinadala ng East Kingdom of Sulu, Sulu. para protektahan ang ang Cebu pa against the the incoming uh, foreigners no uh, at actually nag-end yung kanyang statement na si Lapu-Lapu ay isang embodiment rin no si Duterte rather ay isang embodiment rin ng isang Lapu-Lapu na si si President Duterte ay modern day uh, Lapu-Lapu no so nag-stir up siya ng maraming conversation kasi syempre yung mga historians ay uh, nagitla no doon sa statements na yon kasi syempre uh, yung yung historical sources related to the Battle of Mactan uh, speaks of no such thing na na siya ay isang tausog na siya ay galing sa 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 Sulu and so on and so forth so naging usapin din siya ng value ng historical commemorations ng public history at yung importance ng historical knowledge at at the end of the day kung paano yung yung isang event na pinaghandaan at pinagpinondohan ng milyon-milyon ng mula sa kaba ng bayan ay all of a sudden no this is my take all of a sudden na hijack at na, it, the senator made it about him and and the president no whereas it's supposed to be about uh Lapu-Lapu and and that historic moment in in Mactan no so uh yung gusto ko lang i-bring up dito na na point ko is yun din yun, yung yung idea ng framing at yung idea ng kung paano tinitignan ng mga bagay-bagay kasi to me ang dangerous din nung nangyari na yon na uh, na-coopt yung event uh, in a way in many ways kasi uh, nagamit yung image nila pula po for i mean for lack of a better term for political agenda na na to bolster the image of of the administration again and and the president Uh, at hindi naman ito kasi bago sa atin, di ba? Alam naman natin kung paano nagagamit yung historical events at historical commemoration to so the advantage of people in power. Like, for example, Ferdinand Marcos used the memory of World War II to bolster yeah. his image as a war hero and gain political traction. So alam natin na may malaking impact yung ganitong 
uh, events, commemorations sa, sa public consciousness. So, uh, for it to be marred by such an incident is nakakalungkot kasi uh, ito na sana yung isa dun sa mga highlight nung quincentennial events at ang daming tao behind it na naghanda for it. Tapos ang naging conversation ay hindi yung commemoration kundi yung nangyari sa speech ni ni Senator Bongo na by the way ay naglabas rin ng kanyang apology na uh, hindi daw niya intention na sirain yung yung event. So nag-apologize ano sa siya. Ano yung, yung implications? Oh, oh. Right, mm-hmm. that's so funny. Anyway, yung dyan sa mga ano, historical revisionism, kasi kayong tatlo historian kayo, di ba? So mas gamay nyo yung paano ba yung historical revisionism. Sa akin kasi yung tanong ay mas isang ethical question din eh. Kapag nagkukwento ka ng kasaysayan, sino yung pinagsisilbihan ng kwento mo? Kasi lahat naman tayo exactly. pwede magkwento ng kasaysayan eh. We can use different words, describe the similar facts. Pero yung ultimate question, ethical question sa dulo ay para kanino ka nagkukwento? Di ba? For whom and for mm-hmm. what? Malinaw doon sa pagkukwento, besides the fact na wala siyang historical foundation yung sinabi ni Bongo doon sa event, Merong malinaw na political agenda para i-bolster yung imahe ni Duterte. Mm. Again, using a macho image of Lapu-Lapu of some sort. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's not even mm-hmm. macho. Yeah. Uh, he was an old guy. Right. Al- alam mo, tama yung tanong ni Andoy eh. Kaninong agenda yung sinserve? Kasi yung historical revisionism, hindi yan masama per se, di ba? We always naman change our argument depending on the you know, availability of Sources. Yeah, availability Frameworks, of new sources. Yes. Evidence. Mm-hmm. Diba? Methods. That's perfectly fine. That's an academic practice. Pero ibang usapan yung uh, ibahin mo yung kasaysayan. Yun nga, para may forward ka na interest. Distortion. Or meron kang gustong accountability na takasan. Kaya ako naiinis talaga ako. Nanggigigil ako dun sa mga historians, itawag yung mga sarili nilang historians, na ipinagtatanggol itong ganitong klaseng naratibo. Litaw na litaw naman na yung gusto talagang mm-hmm. gawin itong uh, senador na ito ay uh-huh. ilagay muli sa pedestal ang administrasyon kahit dito sa naratibong ito na isa sanang pag-alala at sa... yung at yung ano 'di ba at yung at yung i dare say na yung katamaran minsan na na maghanap ng isang konsepto sa sinaunang pamayanan at iugnay sa kasalukuyang panahon para ipaliwanag yung political climate na nangyayari sa atin as if ignoring the hundreds of years na nangyari in between. Diba? Na parang Kailan nyo yan? Basic no, historiography. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Babalikan natin, babalikan natin yung value ng commemoration. Why are we doing this? Why, what are we really commemorating? Yes. Kasi hmm. maliban sa pagtanong sa kung kung paano ginagamit yung kasaysayan, usapin din ito ng kung ano yung kinokommemorate para kanina yung commemoration na nagaganap. And I think sa isang monthly wrap-up na banggit na rin natin na problematic itong commemoration na ito kung hindi siya bibigyan ng maayos na konteksto. Yes. And we see already how it could be hijacked by political intent at nakita rin natin kung paano ginamit, hinahalin tulad sila pula po kay Duterte. Um, Diyan marami akong pwedeng masabi kasi pareho silang matanda for one. And I think the comparison ends there kasi we don't really know much about Lapu Lapu. Yeah. With Duterte, we know a lot and we know that uh, he is not one bit like Lapu Lapu. Ayaw nga niyang maggere eh. No. Hindi lang tayo mananalo sa gera. Mm-hmm. So, bakit bakit siya Lapu Lapu? Eh, si Lapu Lapu lumaban. Inilaban yung kanyang army. <laughs> Totoo. Ako gusto ko din uh, mag-reflect dito tungkol sa status ng historical education sa bansa. Oh, I mean, yeah. imagine yeah. a senator making such claim na walang kahit na anong academic basis. Diba, saan, saan galing yan, sis? Diba, ano, sinong writer mo? I-fire mo na yan. Tapos, pati nga, yun nga, si Vice Governor mm-hmm. Jolo Revilla, diba, na magsasabi na si Ferdinand Magellan yung bayani ng makta. Parang girl, kahit grade 1, kung nag-take ng civic at kultura, alam na mali yan. Parang, ano na? <laughs> ano na nangyari? So, I think, isa din yun sa mga dapat, you know, uh, sa mga dapat nating pansinin bilang mga social scientists at bilang mga guru. And that was April, and it's now May, so let's look forward to more issues. Sana meron ulit tayong positive issue next month. Ipagpatuloy natin yung pagtutulungan sa isa't isa. The community pantry spirit should continue. At the same time, we should also register to be able to vote 2022.
So once again, thank you very much to Andoy Evangelista. Alam naming busy siya sa kanyang pag-aaral <laughs> ng kanyang doktorado sa Hong Kong. So maraming maraming salamat. Andoy, baka may gusto kong i-plug dyan. Baka... <laughs> well naman, um, isearch nyo lang yung matatag community pantry at mag-donate kayo ng mag-donate. And for our listeners, if you want to join the conversation, you may follow us and you know drop us comments and messages on our social media pages at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You may also visit our website at www.podcast.com. So thank you very much for listening and have a good day. <laughs>